This is Feed Your Mind, and so in today's video, we're going to discuss lightning, thunder, and storms. And so it turns out science isn't actually as sure as you would think about why storms happen and why lightning strikes. So in this video, we're going to brainstorm on alternative ideas because basically the scientific theory, well, they have a lot of flaws in it once you start looking into it because they just can't figure out why clouds go from being stable at one moment to discharging electricity at another moment. And so real quick before we get started, isn't it kind of strange that story we are told about how this guy named Benjamin Franklin was flying a kite with a key on it in a lightning storm? That story is starting to sound kind of weird when you think back on it. And so even the mysteries of how the clouds attract water droplets to absorb into a cloud form, that phenomenon alone is pretty unique and amazing. And so we discussed in previous videos how water seems to constantly move as if almost alive. And so as we notice the process of water forming into the cloud form and then the cloud forms producing lightning, I believe it's time to re-examine what water might be. Because the water will float to the sky once it evaporates which is explainable but once that water moisture gets into the air it begins to collect into these clouds so basically they say clouds can range anywhere from 1 to 11 miles high and one thing about the clouds is that it is kind of in a way separating the waters from the waters visually we can see how the bible tells us that and then we see how the clouds go up and form 1 to 11 miles high and these clouds the scientists say are filled with negative and positive protons and so even scientists seem somewhat baffled as to why all of a sudden these negative and positive protons start colliding with each other inside of the cloud. The scientists will act like the clouds are basically a big bang simulation, basically. They're saying like protons start going crazy all of a sudden in these clouds and then they start clashing with each other and it sparks these charges that they think what's triggering these discharges is related to cosmic rays. But is it possible this could have something to do with the tortal firmament because it looks like the firmament has tortal properties to it which Nikola Tesla was actually tapping into where you can pull energy out of thin air so they didn't want us to know this information because that shows us how electricity is free and available whenever we want it really and I think this lightning in the clouds has something to do with as to what Nikola discovered so basically the clouds discharge and make this loud reaction, which is thunder. The lightning is what causes the thunder. That's the sound when the detonation happens in the clouds. That's the loud noise. But first we see the lightning because light travels much faster than sound. So we see the cloud discharge the lightning and then basically it takes a second and you'll hear the thunder. And the closer you hear the thunder to the lightning, that's the closer the storm is to you. I believe they say you can even count like one, two three each second is supposed to be like a mile or something so that's how you know if the storm is far if it's getting closer or whatever as far as the thunder though it definitely sounds like the thunder has something to do with the firmament i mean it just sounds like it's a dome like the sound is amplified by the dome firmament so that comes into question if the firmament is simply tortle or is there actually physical properties there as well that are interacting and so it could be a combination of both but um whatever it is when you hear that thunder listen to it next time it really sounds like it's echoing throughout the dome it's proof of the dome it sounds like the way it echoes but as far as what's causing these storms well let's brainstorm a little bit about that and so one hypothesis is it could be related to energy because humans have been proven to be able to influence water droplets. If you speak angry words to it and negative words to it, the water crystals change structure to ugly structures. And if you speak kind and love onto the water, then the water crystals will change shape into beautiful forms. So with that information, now we can possibly tie that in with storms and could a be possible that storms have anything to do with human behavior or perhaps the weather could have its own type of energy and it could be in moods like when it's happy it's bright and sunny out and then when the mood of the earth becomes unstable or it needs a release 
there's a time when it requires a discharge and it becomes cloudy and storms and you have tornadoes and hurricanes and stuff like that. With this theory, it would probably take a while for energies to build up and for energies to be released. And like I said, humans could have something to do with the energies as well. Because over many winters, I witnessed several times where it wouldn't snow all the way through November and December. And then right on Christmas Day, it snows. Because I feel people really wanted a white Christmas. You know, some people like it to snow on Christmas. And so is it possible that people's intentions as a collective and individually as well contribute to affecting our reality, including weather? Another interesting addition to this discussion is some of the ancient civilizations thought that weather had something to do with the spirit world. So they had entities like Thor and Zeus and weather was related to the anger of spirits and stuff. But, you know, it could be a number of things. It could just be natural and random or the atmosphere can change into good and happy moods to a gloomy mood. That's actually a common practice to compare weather to moods because people will say, are you feeling under the weather? Or they'll say, are you feeling gloomy? And then if you notice a lot of times when it's bright and sunny out, people seem to have better energy and they seem to be happier. And then when it's cloudy and gloomy out for a while, sometimes you can notice that reflect in the moods of people. And so an interesting thing that they've been saying is that I'm hearing that most lightning doesn't even strike the ground. So I don't know if you guys heard anything about that, but I definitely think there's much more going on with the firmament because as we get into the next subject, which is going to be about sprites and elves where lightning goes upwards, not only from the clouds, but also in the upper atmosphere and they penetrate what appears to be a firmament. So we're going to get into much more information about sprites and elves in the next video. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you have your notification bell on. And if you have anything to add to this discussion, leave a comment in the comment section. Check out my playlist, Weather and Seasons Are Not What You Were Told, for much more information related to this video. I'll leave the link in the comment section and the description box. Visit FeatureMind1.com for bonus videos, news, exclusives, links to my other channels, social media links, and much more. If you support this channel, sign up to Feed Your Mind VIP room for secret videos, early releases, and sneak peeks at Patreon.com slash Feed Your Mind. Plus, you're helping this channel release much more documentary style videos. All links are in the comment section and the description box. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe, and click your notification bell. This has been another episode of Feed Your Mind. Thank you for tuning in, signing off. Mm -hmm.